Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So, today's video, talking about these guys right here, Thunder Eggs. You can maybe see behind me on my workbench. I have some other Thunder Eggs back there, including a couple of geodes, some nodules, because you can't talk about Thunder Eggs without talking about nodules, talking about geodes, at least a little bit. But um, I really love a good Thunder Egg. So uh, let's uh, head on over to the bench. We'll talk about what these things are. One of the problems that we have as rock hounds is we like to show our thunder eggs cut, polished, how beautiful they are on the inside. But from the perspective of somebody that's new to the world of rock hounding, that can be very challenging, right? Because, well, you're not seeing them cut, you're seeing the outsides. And this is the outside of a number of rocks. Uh, on the table here, we have thunder eggs, geodes, and nodules. And they're all, that is referring to very different things. But by looking at the outsides, we can determine what is what. And that's why it's important for you to know what a metamorphic, igneous, and sedimentary rocks are, how they're formed, and then also to be able to identify some of them, like the difference between basalt and rhyolite, two very different looking uh, igneous volcanic, volcanic rocks, okay? Um, we're not going to get too far into the weeds here, but uh, it's two very important things to uh, be able to, to look for. Um, I like thunder eggs because they can tell very interesting geological stories all in one rock. Now, before we flip these over, let's look at an example of what, it, what I'm talking about here. So I really like this slab as a means to be able to understand the way agates and, well, thunder eggs and just different things are formed, okay? Because it, we have a number of stories here which are quite good. Imagine a gas bubble in a lava flow, okay? Now, we have hot, silicate-rich waters rushing into that void, either uh, just kind of through gravity, an entry port into the, the gas hole, or through diffusion. So it's kind of just like seeps in, right, uh, through all the different pores. Well, different temperatures will make different things. And that's the easiest way to put it. Now, imagine this down here at the bottom of your screen is the down of the gas bubble, the bottom. So we have a event happening where we had silicate rich waters that were kind of on the cooler side move in and filled up to right about there. Then we had another event where pressure was involved and we can see that by this fortification line that goes all the way around the exterior. Okay. And then we have Try to get you not not light aimed on you. Then we have more cool silicate rich waters coming in and depositing in layers, and gravity is just kind of building them up stack by stack by stack. Then we have a bunch of really hot silicate rich waters move in, and we get this crystal growth. Okay, so right there we can determine that we had a layer building event, a pressure event, a layer building event and then a crystal formation of it, all in one gas bubble. I think a good start is to talk about what a nodule is. I have three examples of nodules here on the bench. Can you pick them out? Well, hopefully you picked that one, that one, and that one. All three of those are in fact nodules. Now, this nodule is an example has basalt still on the outside and on the inside. Well, you can see that we have uh, some chalcedony on the exterior perimeter, and then we have uh, quartz growth. This came from Red Top in central Washington, dug by me. <laughs> Here's this other nodule also has basalt still on the outside, and this one is primarily just uh, quartz crystal growth on the inside. This big guy, okay, we still have some basalt on the exterior of it, and uh, wow, look at that. 
So this is another one from Red Top that dug by me. <laughs> uh, maybe I should just not say that and just go <laughs> keep going. Uh, this is a neat, neat one because we can see here at the bottom we have some different uh, just kind of straight calcineny growth going up into a little bit of light fortification. And then we have a big pocket of crystal growth right there. So the way uh, those are identified is with their basaltic exteriors. Um, next up, let's just talk about what a geode is, right? Geode, big void, crystals on the inside. Pretty simple, right? Uh, a lot of them get formed in sedimentary rocks, but you can also have geodes in like basalt and stuff. Um, that's not really the topic of today's video. So let's uh, scoot these guys aside and we will purely focus on our thunder eggs, which are these guys right here. Now, let's, uh, let's talk about this big guy. This one came from the Lucky Strike Mine in Central, uh, Central Oregon. And it is a beautiful, beautiful thunder egg. And uh, we can see it. We have a number of things happening here, right? We have quartz crystal. We have waterline. We have a little bit of fortification. We have dendrites coming in. And we can actually learn a lot about this, um, the makeup of this based upon the colors that you see, which is another thing that we will talk about here after we look at all these different thunder eggs. Of course, uh, we have this one here, which is a great example of why people will say a thunder egg can be a geode, but a geode can't be a thunder egg. Like, this is kind of what they're referring to, right? So we have a thunder egg from Richardson's Ranch, and we have that building of waterline agate, waterline chalcedony. And then we go into a void, and in this case, we have opal on the inside of that void, which is very cool. And it does glow. Maybe I should have got my UV light out, um, but it just has a, a light white uh, phosphorescence to it. Um, you can also get multiple gas bubbles forming, and they kind of grow together, right? And you can get that kind of formation of Mickey Mouse, <laughs> Mickey Mouse head. <laughs> but uh, it, beautiful stuff, and we can see some of those processes in place here. Now, these two down here are both from the Little Natchez area in central Washington, collected by me. And amazing specimen here. Of We can see that very light blue. We can see that tenaway gray. We have quartz crystal. We have fortification up there at the top. A beautiful specimen and a prime example of what could be found up there. I do want to talk a little bit about color because the colors that you see in these thunder eggs can tell us what is in them, which is awesome. Okay, so here's another one from Richardson's and we can see that kind of chocolatey rhyolite exterior. Some examples like with this one back here. Uh, yeah, let's do this one. This one's a little bit more colorful. Okay, so um, the red is going to be iron. You can get blacks and pinks from manganese. You can get blues, violets, that kind of like color from cobalt. And you can get different greens, green blues from copper. Now there's a lot of different minerals will produce a lot of different colors, but that's just kind of an example. You know, we have to, you have to remember that minerals are made of elements. So elements make minerals, minerals make rocks. <laughs> um, and lastly, lastly here, this nice beautiful double with a little druzy pocket. Druzy being really small quartz crystal. But um, you can kind of really see now how some of these things are formed and we have, can learn based upon cutting these some of the different processes that were in place when they're being formed. So, uh, yeah, I think with that said, I hope you enjoyed this little presentation about thunder eggs. I really enjoy these. I like that sometimes, you know, you might 
might cut a thunder egg and it's kind of lame on the inside, right? Like maybe not lame. It just won't be as good as some of the other ones you might be cutting. Um, so uh, with that said, I think we're going to leave this one here, everybody. Um, and I will catch you on the next video. Thank you so much for watching my entire video. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel and you would like to support the work that I'm doing even further, you can do so by becoming a channel member down below by just hitting, hitting the join button. Doing so will give you access to a growing library of videos and posts, and it really goes a long way in supporting the channel. So thank you so much for coming by. I appreciate each and every one of you.